In this lesson, we're going to be looking at a very general form of root finding known as the fixed point method. So for our example, let's look at the same function that we've been using. So x squared minus e to the x is equal to negative 5. And our plot for this, once again, looks something along the lines of a parabola on the left-hand side into a negative e to the x on the right-hand side of the y-axis. And we know that our solution is somewhere between 2 and 3 in x. So in the most general sense, here's how we determine a fixed point method. We're going to take this equation that we're trying to solve, and we're going to solve just for one of our x's. So what I mean for that is I'm going to choose an x in here. I'm going to isolate that x. I'm still going to have x's on the right-hand side, but I'm still just going to call that good. So for our first method, let's isolate the x from this x squared. So I'm going to move the e to the x to the right-hand side and end up with e to the x minus 5. And then to isolate the x, I need to take the square root. So we're going to end up with x is equal to the square root of e to the x minus 5. Now, I can also solve for the x and the e to the x. So doing that, I end up with e to the x is equal to x squared plus 5. So if I want to isolate the x there, then I end up with a natural log of x squared plus 5. Now it gets a little confusing to have all these x's running around. So the way we usually talk about this is we give this a function name, g. And since I have two separate functions here, I'm going to call this g1 and g2. These g functions are going to be the functions that we'll use to try and solve this equation. So here's the algorithm for this. We start off with a guess for x. Once we have that, we plug that into our g equation. And we just set our x of, I'm going to say that this is k plus 1, is equal to this g of x term. We use this value and the previous value to try and get an estimate for our error. So the way we say that is that we estimate that our error is somewhere in the range of the difference between our current guess, xk plus 1, and our guess before that, x of k. So just as before, we have two options at this point. The first option is that our epsilon is less than our tolerance. In that case, we just set our final solution of x to this x k plus 1, our most recent guess. And if our epsilon is greater than our tolerance, then all we need to do is head back to our evaluation step and plug our x of k into our g again. So this g is evaluating x of k. So we choose a value for x. We plug it into one of our g values. That g value spits out some new value, which then becomes our next guess for x. And so we just keep running through this process until we stop moving around. Whenever that x stops moving, we've hit what we call a fixed point. So our goal here is to find a fixed point of our function g of x. So in reality, there are infinitely many ways to isolate a single x value. So we can't just say that any of these are going to work. And in fact, g1 doesn't work nearly as well as we would hope. g2 does work quite well. So what is a good way of guessing before we actually try things if something is going to work? Well, we can look at the derivative. So if we look at g prime of x, this is approximately equal to g of x plus delta x minus g of x divided by delta x. 
if we want to relate this to our equation up above, we're saying that g of x k plus 1 minus g x of k divided by x of k plus 1 minus x of k is equal approximately to v prime of x. Well, this is also equal to x of k plus 2 minus x of k plus 1 over x of k plus 1 minus x of k. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at the space between two of our guesses divided by the space between essentially the two previous guesses. If these are getting closer together, then we should be approaching a fixed point. So our goal here is that the ratio of these distances is going to be less than one. So if we can calculate g prime of x and the absolute value of that is less than one, so let's carry these back, then we can be relatively sure that our function is going to converge. If we calculate the derivative of g2 of x, we will find actually that this is less than one for all values of x. And if we run this out numerically, we find that g2 of x actually converges for all values of x. If we do the same thing for g1 of x, and the math gets a little ugly there, we find that the absolute value of this is greater than 1 around x equals 2. And we start running into trouble below x equals 2 because uh, this e to the x becomes less than 5, which means that we end up with an imaginary number. And in fact, g1 of x converges not to our zero that we're trying to find here, but it converges to this complex number, 0 0.1569 plus 2.431, and it does that for x less than about 2. So you can plug any number less than 2 into this algorithm as your initial guess, and you should end up with this complex number if you do enough iterations. So what we'd like to do is find a way to construct a pretty good g without just having to guess and check and see which one works well. And there is actually a very good way of doing that. So what we're going to do to start off is go look at the Taylor series for f of x, where f of x here is x squared minus e to the x plus 5, right? Pushing everything to the left-hand side. So f of x is approximately equal to f of some other x value. I'm going to call that x bar, just so we have a name for it. Plus delta x multiplied by f prime of x bar plus some other stuff that we're not going to worry about. Now this delta x is just x minus x bar. So if we write this out, and we know that what we're trying to find is the location of x where f of x is equal to 0. So we're actually going to set this term equal to 0 and then solve for this value of x. Remember, x bar is going to be our current guess, and x is what we're trying to find. That's going to be our next guess. So writing this out, f of x bar plus this x minus x bar f prime of x bar is equal to zero. And solving for x yields x bar minus f of x bar divided by f prime of x bar. So again, we have isolated an x value based on some other x values. So this is our g of x. And I'm going to call it, since we already have two g's, I'm going to call this g3 of x. So for our equation, we said that f of x is equal to x squared minus e to the x plus 5. Taking the derivative of that, we end up with 2x minus e to the x, and then the 5 goes away. All right, before we go any further, let's take a look at what this is actually doing. If we have an initial guess 
we're going to look at the position of this, the f of x, and the slope here, right? That's the f prime of x. So let's draw the slope. And essentially what our plan is, we are going to look at where this line defined by this point and slope intersects with zero. So we're going to take that value as our next guess. So if this is our x1, this value here will be our x2, and we'll run through that process again. Calculate our x prime value, run that slope out until it hits the x-axis, and this point right here is going to be our x3. So let's run that one out one more time, and we'll kind of see hopefully how this thing starts to converge. So now we're down here. This is our x4. And then that kind of leads us to x5, which ends up being very close to our value. So this is what we're doing. We're just running through that over and over again. The actual function we end up with is this g3 of x is equal to our previous value of x minus x squared minus e to the x plus 5 divided by 2x minus e to the x. And I'm not going to prove it here, but for this case, g3 actually converges for all x. This g3 of x is a method known as Newton's method. And now that we've worked on that for a pretty complex problem, I actually want to look at a very iconic case of this being used. And that is to solve x squared is equal to a. So looking at this equation, we're going to end up with our f of x equal to x squared minus a, and f prime of x equal to 2x. So plugging that in down here, we'll get g of x equal to x minus x squared minus a, all over 2x, which in turn is equal to x minus x over 2 plus a over 2x. So simplifying this down one more step, we can say that g of x is equal to 1 half x plus a over x. And what this equation is, is the Babylonian method to find the square root of a value. So this is solved when x is equal to the square root of a. Well, running through this step just a few times gives you a pretty good approximation for the square root of a. So this isn't too bad to code up. The g values are the hardest thing to write in. And all you need to do is just to loop through those g values over and over again until you either converge or blow up or go to some place you never expected. So go give it a try and good luck.